So this lesson here is for the second day of our unit one, which is geometrical optics. It's chapter 23 in the textbook. And today we're going to start to look at how you can figure out exactly where these images are going to be formed. Um, we've got just, you know, one page here. Um, I guess it's what I'm going to call pages 11 and 12, but it's one piece of paper for you in the handout where we're going to just clarify some of the kind of standard ways we decide whether things are positive or negative, and then we're going to dive right into it and try a few of these out. Um, so throughout our work with lenses, we're going to work with two different types of lenses. Uh, the one that you see on the left up here, this is a convex lens, just based on its shape. And based on what it does, how it brings rays together, we're going to say that it's a converging lens. I'm going to, just for fun, say that this is the kind of happy lens. This is kind of the nice lens uh, that we're going to begin working with. And then later on, we're going to go and take a look at this kind of lens. We won't do it today. This one is actually concave in terms of its physical shape. And it's diverging in terms of what it does. And I'm going to suggest to you that it's all kind of backwards. So from a physicist's point of view, I'm going to say it's an unhappy lens. Just a little metaphor, and you'll kind of see how we're going to play off on that uh, throughout the next couple of days. We're going to talk about, in just a minute or two, how these lenses have something called a focal length to them, some sort of number that's a, a length. And for the nice lens, the converging or convex lens, we're going to say that that focal length is a positive number. Very nice thing. But for that weird lens, we're going to say, oh, yeah, it's got a focal length, but oh, be aware of the fact that it's actually a negative number. I, we're, here's where we're going with this. You can use one set of equations, one pair of equations, and do everything in this unit with just two equations. The only thing we'll have to be careful about is, well, when should the math be receiving a negative from us so that it can give us the right, uh, the right answer in the end? Uh, what do we got here? I got a light bulb that's lighting up my object, right? So the object is over here. Light's going to bounce off its rough surface, make its way hopefully through the lens and land over on the paper, right, where we're going to have an image. And in a perfect world, it should work just like that. If you look at just the general path of the light, it comes off the light bulb bounces off the beak, it's going to go through the lens, it actually goes straight, not like my wavy line, I'm just kind of generically showing you direction here, that's the light path in terms of its direction. From our picture here, it's going to go from your left to your right. Now, the math is going to give us um, guidance for where to find the image, and it may use negatives to help us out a little bit. So here's the way that we're going to officially decide when things are positive or when they're negative. Uh, I'm going to start off with the object. And the rule goes like this. It's kind of a bit of a strange rule. You might look at it and go, how would that not be the case? Um, there is an obscure time when what I'm about to write down could actually go negative. But the rule says this. Um, if the object, okay, that's my road runner here, is on the side the light comes from, then what we're going to call the object distance, DO, is going to be positive. That's going to be true 99 times out of 100. It'll be a couple of days down the road when we finally see a case where it's negative. This next issue, though, is actually much more common. We're going to talk about the image. If the image is not, okay, so is not on the side. The light comes from. Then the image distance is positive. 
So that's what's happening here. I can see the lights coming from the left. My object is on the left. So the object distance is going to be called positive. And the image is not on the left side. It's over on the right side. So we're going to say that its image distance is actually going to be positive. Okay. I know that's that you're looking at that probably right now going, what? I don't get it. We just started and I'm already a bit lost. Wait until we're done this whole page and wait until we've done the first example. And then maybe look back at that and you'll see how we can use those positives and negatives to figure out exactly where things are. And speaking of where things are, here's something about converging lenses that you should be aware of. If you have some rays coming into the lens that are parallel, we like to think of them as maybe coming from the sun because the sun is really far from the earth. So any rays that are actually making it to your glass lens, if they're going to hit the glass lens, they're probably pretty much traveling parallel, like remarkably close. When they hit that lens, they're going to all go through one spot. If you were to put a tiny little piece of paper in this one spot where that black dot is, it would probably light on fire. Right? There's just going to be so much energy there. And then they'll actually diverge again after they pass that point. But if there is something sitting there, it's going to get really hot. And so that place is called the focal point. Now you can spin the lens around backwards and you get the same focal point with this kind of lens that's here. So in some sense, they kind of have a focal point on either side. Uh, but either way, if you take a ruler and then measure how far is it from the glass lens over to that focal point, that's the focal length. Okay, that's what's going on right there. Now, one little random bit of trivia, if you want to become an optometrist, optometrists don't generally talk about the focal length of lenses. Instead, they prefer, for very good reason, to talk about the power of a lens and the power to an optometrist. The power is actually the focal length reciprocated, just upside down. There is one catch, though. Although we're going to play around with focal lengths measured in whatever works for us. Could be millimeters, centimeters, meters. Centimeters will be really common. Um, you can't if you're an optometrist. You would have to be working with focal lengths that are measured in meters. And then powers are measured in these neat units called diopters. I believe the abbreviation is a capital D. And so if somebody tells you, oh, yeah, the power of this lens is 5D, you can say, give me a minute, and you can reciprocate back to get a focal length. But it will be a focal length in meters. All right, almost ready to go. Bottom of the page. There are three rays, three paths of um, little light beams that we're going to draw on our diagrams. You could draw billions of rays. But we're going to draw three because you've you got to know when to stop at some point. Um, so here's my picture. And you can see that this object that's over here is having its rays get beautifully organized into an image. Right? So here's my object. Got my image over here. There are some distances that are important to us. The distance from the object over to the glass, over to the lens. That's called our object distance, DO. And the distance from the lens until you get to the place where the image is formed, that's going to be our DI, the distance, of, uh, distance to the image. OK, some rays to draw. Let's pick one part of this Roadrunner, maybe the beak. And I'm going to watch some rays that come off of it. One possible path for some light beams, for some light particles, could be right off the beak heading flat out horizontally, totally parallel to that dotted line that I've got down there. I just went a little too far with that. I'm going to do it again. That dotted line is actually called the principal axis. So imagine you've got a ray that's parallel to the principal axis. Well, we've already talked just a second ago about how this lens is going to bend that. It's going to bend it through the focal point. 
So it's going to go right on through that little black dot that I've got there and keep going until you hit the paper. So it's going to go and hit right there. Some people like to put a little name on that and they say, hey, if you've got a parallel ray going in, then it's going to be focal point on the way out. Another possibility is the reverse. What about a ray that actually leaves the beak and goes right through this focal point on the left side and then touches the glass? Well, you just do the reverse. Once you get to, oh, I kind of missed there a little bit. I'm going to draw that again. It doesn't quite line up perfectly with my picture, but it's close. And so that ray is going to go like this and then hit right there on the paper. So that one is focal point in and then parallel on the way out. A third ray that's great for kind of a backup to make sure you're on target is one that leaves the object. We're going to leave the beak and goes right through the center of the lens. It turns out it doesn't really bend much at all. And it's going to go and hit that paper also in that same spot. So this one is just center, center, right? If you're center on the way in, you're going to be centered on the way out. So when we go to do our ray diagrams, let's always draw those three. Two should be enough to figure out that this image is going to happen at right, that one spot on the paper. Um, the third one's just there kind of as a safety. All right, some equations that can help us out. Two, just two for the whole chapter. Here's one. One over the focal length, okay, that's the distance to the focal point, is equal to one over the object distance plus one over the image distance. One equation for the entire chapter, but you have to be careful because sometimes we're going to put negatives in there. If it's one of those weird looking lenses, we're going to put a negative value in for F. If the uh, image is not on the opposite side, we're going to see a negative for the DI. Another thing we like to talk about is magnification. How big is the object? We abbreviate that usually as an M. And what we really should do is go and grab a ruler and measure how tall these things are. So we would say, oh, okay, here's my height of my object. And here's my ooh, upside down height of my image. This particular image in this picture actually has a negative HI, right? Because it's upside down. Magnification really should be a ratio of HI divided by HO. And you can see in this picture, magnification's less than one because it looks smaller than the original. And actually it's negative because HI is negative in this picture. But most of the time we don't measure those HIs. We actually do a little geometrical optics here. We do a little geometry and we say, you know what? The farther things are from the lens, the bigger they are. And it's all about proportions. So if it's not handy to grab a ruler and measure the H's, you could instead measure the distances, right? So we've got our DO and DI there. It turns out you could actually go DI divided by DO. And that almost works, except here, both the DO and the DI are positive, And I kind of really want to see a negative magnification. So we do this. We pre-install a little opposite sign. It will always be there. And so we'll typically not play around with the H's that I've drawn in pink. And we'll just say, hey, you want the magnification? Let's just go DI divided by DO, but with an opposite sign. All right, we are now ready to begin. Uh, we've got everything we need. Uh, there are two equations and how they measure them. We've got a ray diagram with three rays we can draw in. Here are the rules for plus and minuses. If it's a nice lens, which it will be for this lesson, it's a positive focal length. If the object is on the side the light comes from, DO is positive. And if the image is on the other side to the light, the DI is positive. Let's give this a try and see what happens. So here's our, our first of a few examples that we're going to try out today 
and see where the image would actually be. So this is a 10 centimeter focal length lens and it's a positive 10, right? Because it's a nicely shaped one, right? So that's good news. And the object is 30 centimeters away. We're going to go with a positive DO. Um, I've got my focal point sitting here in my picture, okay, right here. And another one on the other side, right there. Uh, for interest's sake, um, I just want to show you that, you know, this is supposed to be 10 centimeters away. Another interesting little landmark is a couple focal points out, okay, 20 centimeters from the lens. Um, I'm trying to set this story up to show you what happens every time you put your object more than two focal lengths away, more than 20 centimeters in this story. So this particular story is an example of what happens if DO is bigger than two Fs, than two focal lengths. So again, for this story, the focal length is 10 centimeters. What happens if you're more than 20 centimeters out? And the answer is this picture here. Let's try it with a ray diagram first. Uh, grab a ruler and let's go with a ray that's parallel to the principal axis until you get to the glass. Where it actually does two bends because of Snell's law, but I'm lazy. I'm just going to draw it as a single bend right in the middle of the lens. And then turn, line your ruler up with the focal point, draw and draw and draw and draw and draw. Just keep on going. The ray is going to go that way unless you shove a piece of paper there. Okay, another ray to draw. What if you were to leave the beak and go focal point first? Okay, we'll get to the glass. Does a double bend, and then it's going to go parallel to the principal axis. I can already kind of see where this is all going to line up, but let's put one more in. Let's go center. Things are lining up pretty nicely. All right, it, it really looks like those rays are all converging in that one spot. That's where we're going to see the beak for this thing. So there will be there will be an image here. I'm not really good at drawing road runners. So I'm just going to kind of fake it here. There, there's the body, there's the head, and there's the feet, and the fluffy tail. If you put paper there, you would really see it. Okay, so this is this is what we call a real image. It really did happen. We really did see those rays come together. Um, other tests for a real image, if you put paper there, you would see it. So it would show up on paper. So you could go and stick a sheet of paper here. You'd actually see the Roadrunner show up on it if you put it right in that one spot. The other thing that you can do, and this is neat, is remember what it means to see an object. I'm just going to go back in our notes here for a second. To see an object means that the, uh, where did it go? It was here. It means that your eye can take rays that were coming apart bring them together so that they land in that nice little spot on your retina. So if you actually take, um, take a human being and say, okay, let's remove the paper. We'll put a human here with their eyeball. I'm just going to draw an eye. And a human stares back at this. They will be convinced that that Roadrunner is right here where this image is. Because their brain is going to say, oh, I see the, those rays all coming apart from that one place and they will be totally convinced that actually the Roadrunner is much closer to their eye than than it really is and that it's upside down and, and it looks like it's a little bit small. Well, let's try the math out and see what the math does because the math can do everything we just did in that picture. You know, I might want to split this little box up here a bit. One math equation is 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over di. So I'm going to throw in the numbers that I know. I've got a focal length that was 10, positive 10, it was a nice lens, equals 1 over 30, positive 30. The road runner is on the side the light's coming from. 
and I am curious to know where the image lands. So I'm looking for this DI. So on my calculator, I would probably do that something like this. I'd probably go, okay, um, let's take this 10 and flip it. So 10 and then press that little reciprocation button. We'll move the 30, so subtract 30's flip, 30's reciprocal, and then say go. That is DI but upside down, so then we'll flip it back. There you go, there's the answer. It came out to be a positive 15. So DI is positive 15 centimeters. The fact that it came out to be a positive tells me that this image is real. Okay, the only other equation we can play with is magnification, and it's the opposite of di divided by do. So in this story, the magnification would be the opposite of a 15 divided by a 30. Magnification is one time when we don't really worry about significant figures or significant digits, whatever you want to call it, and we'll just you know go with nice little fractions. So this would be negative one half. The fact that it's negative tells me that the image will be small, uh, will be inverted, and the fact that it's a half tells me that it's going to be small. And so either with the picture, the ray diagram, or with the math, I can see that yes. We're going to get an image, it's going to be real, it's going to be inverted, and it's going to be small. That happens every single time you put your object somewhere past two focal lengths out. You'll find you get this nice real image, but it's inverted and it's small. So that's why I've got this little header up there, right? If objects are more than two Fs out, more than 20 centimeters in this case, It'll be real inverted and small. One thing to just mention about this idea of an image, an image is not a sticker that flies through the air and lands somewhere to look like a little picture. An image is a, is a conceptual idea of this place in space where all of the rays briefly go on top of each other. It's the only place that looks focused when you put a piece of paper there. And it is the place that your eye and your brain will perceive the object to be uh, when it looks back towards those rays. Okay, let's try another one out. This time we're going to move the Roadrunner to exactly two focal lengths away. So we've got a focal point here for our lens, right, 10 centimeters out, and then we're going to be another 10 centimeters out and try to figure out what happens in this story. So this is supposed to be the story of what happens if I take my object and put it right at 2F. And we'll see that it always does kind of a predictable thing here. I want to do this with both math and the ray diagram. Let's start with the ray diagram. Uh, I'm already starting to convert this Roadrunner into an arrow, which is what a lot of physics people do, because we're not good typically at drawing Roadrunners. So we just draw arrows. So the top of the arrow is the, you know, the top of the object, the top of the Roadrunner. Hey, there goes my parallel on the way in. So I'm going to go focal point on the way out and just keep on drawing. Another ray could be focal point on the way in and then parallel on the way out. And then one more as a backup, center, center. So if you're confused on the first one we've done, just, just keep going here. We're going to do a few more, and I think you'll find that you kind of pick up a bit of a rhythm. Looks to me like we're going to form an image. The top of the Roadrunner will be down here. So if I drew that, it would kind of look like this. Right? There's where the arrow will look like it is. Let's get some help with the math. And then we'll make some judgments about whether this thing is real or virtual and, and so on. So with the math, two equations. First one is this 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. When that's done, we'll try out magnification. 
Okay, this was a nice lens with a positive focal length of 10. The object is 20 away, and we're looking for di. So on my calculator, I would go something kind of like this. Probably 10 flipped. Bring over the 20, so minus 20 flipped. Say go, and flip it back. 20, positive 20. So we've got an image distance that is positive 20 centimeters away. That's telling me it's on the other side of the glass compared to where the light came from, which is kind of right where it should be. So the fact that it came out positive tells me that it's real. And I can really see those rays all crossing each other right there. It really does cross. Now magnification. Magnification would be the opposite of the DI. Well, that was a 20. Divided by the DO. That was another 20. Oh, okay, so the magnification is a negative 1. And we're not too worried about sig figs for that. Hey, it's negative for the magnification, so it's inverted. And it's 1. Well, that's not big or small, so like, forget those. It's actually the same size. That happens every time on that nice lens you put that object two focal lengths away. So we've looked at more than two focal lengths. We've looked at two focal lengths. Let's move in a little bit. Let's do the zone in between one and two focal lengths away. And that's what this next one is. It says, hey, let's go and put the Roadrunner, the object, 15 away. So remember, we had our focal point here at 10. And then I guess two focal points would be out here. So we're in that, that zone, right, of between one and two focal lengths out. So what's happening here where D is greater than a single focal length, but less than two focal lengths. It always does the same thing here. Let's go and see what that is. We'll try it twice. We'll try it with the ray diagram, and then we'll try it with the math. So I'm going to go and, and draw a line that's parallel until I get to the glass. And then after I get to the glass, I'm going to go focal point. And then draw it nice and long. That ray just keeps on going. Okay, another option. What if you go focal point first until you get to the glass? This one barely touches the glass here. Just barely. And then it's going to go this way. Okay, it looks like those rays are going to touch, but wow, do you ever have to go pretty far away to get there? Uh, the little backup ray, let's do the center one. Just make sure that we're on target. Yeah, things are looking good. Okay, it really did happen. I can see them really crossing each other right there. That'll be the tip of the arrow. Okay, let's check out the math, see what the math says. So we're going to go with 1 over 10, it was a nice lens, equals 1 over 15 plus 1 over di. All right, should be able to do that pretty quick. 10 gets flipped, minus 15 flipped. Flip it back, 30. Okay, so the image distance way down the road, positive 30. And you can see it's so far down the road that it's got quite a height to it. Magnification, magnification is the opposite. It always has that built-in opposite sign of the image distance divided by the object distance. Oh, okay, negative 2. Don't worry about the sig figs. Well, it was a positive 30 centimeters, so it's real. And yeah, the diagram shows me it really did converge. It is inverted because of the negative magnification, and it's big because the magnification is a 2. Okay, that's what happens when you're in this zone right in here between 1 and 2 focal lengths out. Let's do um, two more. Okay, just two more. What if we go and park ourselves 
on the focal point, one focal length away. What if we make d o, the object distance, equal to a focal length? We'll see what that does. Okay, the rays. Things are going to get a little weird here, but they do work. It does, it does work in the sense that this diagram will give you a guide for what's happening with the story. Parallel in, focal point out. Okay. Another possibility. What if on the left side we go through the focal point first? Whoa, that is odd. Leaving the top of the roadrunner and going through this focal point, we're going to go that way. That's not so healthy. Oh, I'll give up on that one. Try the other way, the center one. Okay, so if you go with the center one, that's going to look like this. Gee, all we're doing is running parallel with that blue one. So do the rays ever, do they ever cross each other? Uh, no, uh, this is bad. Um, the rays are not converging. Um, well, that wasn't super helpful. Let's let's try the math out and see what the math says for how this works. Okay, so we'll do the same thing that we've done before. We'll go and do one over the focal length is equal to one over do plus one over di. So we would have one over ten equals one over ten plus 1 over di. So when I do that, 10 flipped, subtract 10 flipped, well, that's 0. And then I have to flip that back. That is not a good thing, right? Trying to divide by 0. Um, so this, this di ends up being 1 over 0, sometimes called the notion of infinity. Um, this is not making me happy, right? I'm like, what? Right, uh, you can't even find the magnification. Doesn't even make sense. Uh, basically, this isn't working. Right? This, like, forget this. This is an absolute. This is a fail. Right? Nothing is happening there. So that's what happens when you're right on the focal point. But there's still one more zone to go. What if you sneak inside the focal point? Okay. So this last one of the day. What happens if your object distance is less than a focal point? What if we're in this zone right in there? Okay, that has an interesting answer to it. It's quite different than the first few answers we saw today, uh, but it's definitely worth seeing. So we'll begin by drawing the rays. First one, what if we go parallel on the way in? All right, okay, so that's going to look like that. And then focal point on the way out. Okay. Now the next one, you have to think outside the box. We're supposed to go through this left focal point, touch the glass, and then go parallel. Well, the idea of going through the left focal point, just line your ruler up like this when you go to draw the ray. Just back align it, as I like to call it. So I'm, I'm not going to draw a ray back here, but my ruler's ready to go back here, and it helps me say, oh, it goes this way. So that line that I've just drawn lines up with this focal point right here. That gets me to the glass. And then at that point, I'm going to go parallel to the principal axis. That's going to look like this. And then one more. What about the center? Okay, what about a ray that leaves the top of that object, hits the center of the glass, and just keeps on going? Now, at first glance, you might go, oh, this one's hopeless too. Those rays are never going to actually touch each other. Well, that's true. They really don't actually touch each other. But it looks like they sort of do in a creative way, right? So there is, there is indeed, you know, no touch out here, right? They don't come together. So we're going to say this is a virtual story. And here's what I mean by that. If you take a human and say, hey, human, Forget putting paper here. It won't work. But take your eyeball 
and stare back at this picture, your eye is going to see these rays, like this ray and this ray and this ray. It's going to look at them and go, whoa, got these rays diverging, which is what they normally do when they leave objects. And your brain goes, yeah, 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 I'm good at that. I'm good at rays that are you know, coming apart when they come at me. And then your brain is also very, very good at kind of back calculating where they came from. And so if that glass is clear, doesn't have a lot of dust on it, your brain will start to say, hey, wait a minute, where are these rays actually coming from? Well, let's backdraw them a little bit because that's what your brain's going to do. And it starts to try to figure out what was the origin of these rays. You see, your brain doesn't really know about the bending at the glass. It doesn't do like the whole Snell's Law thing. It just says, whoa, I see some rays coming at me. And it starts to think about where they actually were when they were together. And the answer is back here. And so your brain will be convinced that that object is actually here. So there is, there is a place in space, right, where those rays touch in a virtual sense, in a confuse the brain kind of sense. Let's see what the math does for this last one. Okay, we've got two equations. One of them is this one. And the other one is this one, the opposite of di on top of a do. Okay, so 1 over 10 equals 1 over 7.5. We've moved inside the focal length plus 1 over di. It's actually pretty impressive that the math can guide you to the same answer. It doesn't need the ray diagram. So minus seven and a half, flipped around, flip it back. Oopsies, broke it. There we go. And the math says, hey, I got a number for you. It's negative 30. And it's working, right? This image distance coming up as a negative 30 is telling you it's not on the side that it usually is. Normally, it's on the side after the glass. Normally it is not on the side that the light comes from, but this image is on the side where the light actually originates over on the left, right? And so that negative sign on that image distance is warning you, hey, you've got a virtual image. Magnification, equation still works great. We're going to put in the opposite of this negative 30 divided by the seven and a half. And so we end up with this negatives that cancel and we end up with positive four. Okay, so what do we have? Um, positive magnification, so it's upright. Yeah, it sure is. Look at the ray diagram. And four, it's going to be really big. That happens every time you go into that zone between the glass and one focal length away. This is how magnifying glasses work, like the Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass when you want to make something look big. You actually hold the object within one focal length on the back side of the glass, and then you stare through the glass at it. Um, and that marks the end of our work with converging lenses. And the next day we're going to look at the kind of unhappy lenses that actually go in the other direction.